Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hey everyone, Sue here from 1A Auto. And today on our 06 Honda Element, I'm gonna show you how to replace the e-brake shoes. If you need any parts for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. 19 millimeter socket, and we're gonna break free the lug nuts. We got the pressure of the vehicle on the tire still, so it doesn't turn. I use a two post lift. At home, you can use jack and jack stands. Now I'm gonna take all the lug nuts off and remove the tire. So the caliper slider pins, bolts are 14 millimeter sockets or a wrench. Now with a little pry bar, I'm gonna pry this right off. There we go. So now I've gotta push the piston back. I'm just gonna set that aside, make sure it's out of my way. that bottom bolt out. Now we can pull the caliper bracket off. Wow. Now it's time to take the rotor off. And these rotors have uh, mounting little screws on them. So we're gonna use a pneumatic screwdriver. It acts like a, punc a puncture. So you hold it taut and hit it with a hammer. So if you get one where the Phillips head is all worn out, um, I'm gonna use a chisel and literally try to turn it with a chisel. There we go. And you don't need these, they're just there to help keep the rotor flush while you're adjusting the e-brakes. I'm just gonna give it a quick little spray down on the hub area. Let's see if we can pray this comes right off. A quick hit of the hammer. Okay, let's get it off the rest of the way. Okay, obviously we can tell that the backing plate has seen better days. The, uh, it's pretty gone right there. As long as where the e-brake springs mount, that uh, metal seems to be in good shape. So I'm gonna give it a clean up, see what we're working with. So I'm gonna start by taking the e-brake mounting springs out. These are pins that slide in the back and you can just turn them into the slotted position of where they, they mount on the spring. That's considered a spring. And here is the actual pin. It's an offset because it's such a funky setup. That's not bent, that's offset. That's the way it goes. I've got new hardware. I recommend if you ever do a brake job to always replace the hardware unless you know you just did it within a year ago. It loses its um, spring, the tension on it, 
and that's then it won't do its job. I'll come over here and undo the same bolt pin on this side. See what we get. There's the adjuster and the bottom spring. There's the adjuster. So several people, some people like to take the e-brake cable right out of this arm. I personally don't like to because it's sometimes it's harder to fight with this. You still have to take this off. So I leave it in when I do this. I take a flat head screwdriver. I go right into this horseshoe clip and I try to spread the ears on it and work it back and forth. Sometimes you can go right up against that shoe like that. Use the shoe as leverage and pry that. There we go. I just had to get in there good enough. Now with that Exposed like that, I can take my screwdriver, bring it in there, and just pull this clip out. Oh, that was an effort. Now, if you've never done one of these before, pay attention. The other side's still together. Like I always like to leave one side together while I do the opposites, but so it goes. This is like a spring washer. Just a tin washer, but it's oval shaped, so it puts pressure on that. And that's the way the arm's gonna go. So the e brake shoe is gonna go with the pin flat face out and the clip on the inside. So now I'm gonna get a new e brake shoe and new hardware and assemble it. So I like to clean the surface of rust and the points, the hit points. Pressure points for the sea brake shoes are these little divots that stick out. We put a little caliper grease on there. That keeps them from when they slide back and forth when the e brake's released and applied. Make sure I get my bucket down there. I'll clean this up a little bit. So now that's all dried, so I'm gonna apply a little caliper grease to those high spots. There's six of them total. Now I've got the new e-brake shoe here. So you're gonna line up the way it looks. You've got the big cutout down here and the half moon up here. So that's the top and that's the bottom. That's where the adjuster is gonna sit. So we're gonna take our new brass pin because I got new hardware for the e-brake. I like to put a little bit of caliper grease there. You're gonna get dirty. <laughs> so now I can slide that through and now that's nice and stays, doesn't freeze up. That's what I'm looking for. I don't want it to freeze up. So I've applied some caliper grease here. Now I'm gonna take that spring washer and I'm gonna put it in between the shoe and the arm. Some people put it on the outside here. I like to put it in between because it, then it, it holds those two pieces of metal separate, puts pressure on them, so there's enough gap so that that can uh, move back and forth. So now I can take a pair of locking pliers, make sure they're out of your way. I'm gonna go on that side, so lock it down. So I put a pair of needle nose lock pliers on there and I've barely got them on the ear of the brass punch. So with all this whole rig up here, I, got, I just gotta get the ear to start. That's all I gotta do. Then I could take a pair of pliers or something, slide it on, just like that. Wonderful. Let's undo these, get those out of the way. Finish up with these clamps, these pliers.
There we go. So it is definitely a combination of pliers and angles. Let's see if I can close the ears on that horseshoe. Here we go, let's do it. Wonderful. Now you can see it moves nice and freely. It's not frozen of any way. So I'm gonna bring that up, line that up. We've got the crossover bar, and that seats right in that little cutout. So it goes right like this. That's how it's gonna sit inside there. First thing I'm going to do is install the clip so I can get this clip in there. And if you notice how this has that cutout, so it's got a, it's, I showed you on the old one, and that's going to go in that manner. So it's one, it wants to go around this, the e brake adjuster rod. Okay. So you have to hold that with one hand in the back. Put a new spring on. See if you can move these things around. I like to try to put it on in that manner because it helps being able to turn this clip. Okay, now you can take a pair of needle nose and hold the wings same time, get a pair of pliers that are wide enough. And you're gonna push down, push on that spring and turn it. There we go. So now I have my new adjuster and I'm gonna just load the threads up with a little bit of anti-seize. So the adjuster will hopefully always move on the e-brakes. Guide the adjuster. You're going to bring this all the way down to the bottom because we don't want any adjustment on it yet. Just bottom that right out. Nice. On this side, I'm going to do the same. Take just a little bit, dab it inside there. Put that cover on. Perfect. Make sure you have that cutout ear up on the top and the half moon on the top. Then you put the, slide the spring up in the guided hole. be that angle. So I cannot use my hand, it's not big enough, to hold the back of that pin and, and utilize my thumb. So I'm going to get a pair of C-clamp pliers and hold the e-brake shoe in place. Take this lovely spring. Now the object of the game is to get that slotted piece over the metal piece. Yeah, it's a good game. Let's see. So now I'm going to put the adjuster in. I'm going to set it up inside first. Then I'll guide one side in and guide the other in. Like that. Okay. 
Might have to adjust some of it out. Perfect. Now let's install the spring. These two little ear tabs, one here and one there, that's where the spring goes. So you just connect it in there like that. Bring it on over to the other side. Connect it in like that. So on the hardware, there is one spring per side that looks like this. There are two springs per side that looks like this. You can't get them confused. One has a hook and one has an L-shaped slot. The L-shaped one is gonna go in here and it's gonna go onto that cross lever rod, right like that. Sit just like that. So the top springs are gonna go in these half moon slots in the shoe. See right there? I don't know if you can see that. And then up onto the ear tab. There we go. Then grab that ear, bring it up to that tab. I'm gonna put some anti-seize around the hub here on the surface. I already took a wire brush to it. So you're gonna line up the adjuster hole and the mounting bolt holes. So with that, we have, it's gonna go like this. So now we need to undo the adjuster a little bit. The e-brake shoes will not fit inside the rotor housing. It's the hat of the rotor. So I'm backing off on the adjustment. There we go. Perfect. At this point, I want to adjust the e-brake. And by doing that, the, the rotor has to be flush on the hat, the hub. So where we had this screw hole hasn't been used for a while, it's all rusty, and this one was stripped. So I'm gonna use two lug nuts. If you have the two mounting screws and they work, you, can, you, you don't have to use the lug nuts, you can use those. And you just wanna make sure it's tight to the hub. And if you have to bang on it, if you wanna be able to spin this and adjust the e-brakes and turn it. Okay, now I'm gonna take that adjuster cover off. I might back off a little bit on that. So the, you're going to use the window, line up where the star adjuster is, and this way you can adjust it. spot right there I'm not a fan of. You don't want the e-brakes to be snug because if they're too snug when it goes down the road brakes expand um, the wheel will start to smoke obviously because it will be almost as if you have the e-brake on. There we go. Backing plate is pretty bad. That's where I'm going to leave it. Now we're going to install the boot. There you go. 
I'm going to start the bolts by hand. And I'm just going to snug them down and then get the manufacturer's specs and torque them down. Let's get the caliper itself out of the way. It's a size 14 socket, in case you forget. Okay, snug those up. Get our torque wrench. The manufacturer's specs on this is 41 foot pounds. Now we can install our pads. The one with the indicator goes on the inside. The one without goes on the out. They just basically sit right in. Like that. And then we're just gonna slide the caliper on. Get our two slider bolts. It's a 14 millimeter socket. The torque on that is 16 foot pounds. That's back on. It's a 19 millimeter socket. Just going to tighten them all down and I can lower it down and torque it. So I'm going to torque the wheels to manufacture a spec, which is 80 foot pounds. And always do it in a star pattern. Double check. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.